I watched as the primitive blue sphere of a planet grew smaller on the view screen. Had it really only been a week since we landed there? I looked at all the empty cubicles on the bridge. I had to get back to warn Equine Command. This planet was dangerous, far beyond anything that the Empire had ever faced. Shit, I could already feel my intelligence starting to slip. I just hoped that I had arrested the condition soon enough, or I was going out to pasture, literally. Everything had been fine when we arrived. The air was better than we thought it would be. The first officer and three others had investigated. A day later, one returned not able to speak at all, only issuing a winning sound, a sound that no one could understand nor translate. After losing another three in another explorer party, I volunteered to go out with special equipment, equipment that filtered the air for me. As I moved out, I had the last two on board monitor my condition. I had gone quite a way from the ship getting constant reports. I soon came to a cleared area with several structures in it. To my abject horror, I saw the captain and the first officer. They and the other three were being ridden like beasts of burden. I looked closer, seeing that all of them seemed to have metal attached to their hooves. The horror of it all. Plus, they all seemed to be happy with their situation. I managed to sneak closer, freeing the captain, though the rest wouldn't follow. I shrugged as I led the captain back to the ship. That was a near catastrophe. The captain was afraid of his own ship. We managed to gather a hell of a lot of readings, though. They led us no closer to what was ailing our people. I thought that we needed another of the crew, so I went back. This time I was afraid that they were waiting for me. I approached the same way I had before. They had some type of motion-activated light system. Damn it! I didn't know what these wheeled transportation vehicles were. They were almost as fast as I was. I managed to damage one of them when it got close to me. I put my front legs and hooves through the front of the vehicle. The satisfying crunch I heard seemed to slow them down temporarily. I returned to the ship, not expecting these primitives to find us. They not only found us, they managed to capture the other two crew members. The only thing I thought was a plus was the fact the two crew managed to kill four of the aliens. Unfortunately, this led to extremely harsh treatment of the two crew members. It was so harsh, in fact, that one of the crew was terminated with what appeared to be a lead projectile weapon. The lead slugs were traveling with far more force than our skin could repel. As mad as I was, I had to remain civilized. I wasn't a primitive animal acting out with brute force. I went through all the weapons on board. Most didn't appear to be strong enough. I mean, I had a disruptor, a disintegration gun, a nuclear disperser. All I was afraid wouldn't be strong enough, these aliens seemed to have extremely thick skin. Hmm, I finally decided on a fire cane. It dispersed a steady stream of fire that couldn't be put out. That should keep the aliens at bay while I read the others. I just hoped that I could find a cure for this malady. I crept as close as I could. Damn, they had increased the number of aliens that were guarding the place. Well, they were close together. It should make the destruction better. I primed the weapon, then pointed. I didn't really have to aim. The weapon was indiscriminate in its destruction. I was having a hard time deciding just who and what to destroy that nearly got me terminated. I barely heard the alien as it was sneaking up behind me. Ah, I thought. The first target decided as I opened up full force on the first, then a second alien. I had to say that the screaming of the aliens was almost like music to my ears. Again, not paying attention nearly got me destroyed as another pair of aliens snuck up on me. They quickly met the same fiery fate as the first two. I am not a violent equine, though I will defend my people in my home with vicious tenacity. I was therefore a little surprised. I was acting as much of a killer as I was. This time I saw more than five alien wheel vehicles approaching my position. I opened up on the first, quite pleased when it exploded, killing the four occupants. Who, I thought, I had eight already and I wasn't even breathing hard. I caught two more of the vehicles, destroying another eight. The other four vehicles slowed their approach to me. This indicated slight intelligence. The thing was, I wasn't really concerned about that anymore. I only wanted them to pay for executing a crew member. I smirked as I moved closer to the nearest of the vehicles, then set it aflame. I then caught the third, barely lighting the four in it aflame. 
Ah, I thought that's 18. Just two more to go. This stopped the last two from advancing. Again, this indicated intelligence that I didn't care about. I swear that I was in a bloodlust, though I wasn't sure how. It was at that moment that I noticed that one of the filters had slipped partly loose. I reapplied it, feeling the blood rage decline to almost half. It was also a few moments after the blood rage faded, I noticed that my intelligence was starting to slip. I stupidly chose to ignore that, going after the two remaining vehicles. Catching both, I smiled as I heard the screams of the aliens as they burned. I should have realized that this was the aliens' world. They could bring in a lot more. I moved to the structures I had seen earlier. There I could see the other seven of the crew. They were nude within a pen of some type, acting as if they were wild animals. The truly sad thing, though, was the fact that none of them recognized me at all. Somehow I managed to catch the first officer, shocked to see no intelligence in his eyes at all. I set the rest of the crew free, hoping they would make their way to the ship, though I felt little hope of that. I made the ship, though not before setting all the structures on fire. A small, satisfied smile came to my lips as I set those that escaped the flames on fire. I then turned, making my way to the ship, getting the first officer in, though was an adventure. I managed to get a hell of a lot more readings in the medroom. I was shaking my head, trying to dissuade the primitive thoughts that were trying to intrude. An hour later, a beeping confirmed what I was afraid of. The atmosphere of this planet was not conducive to my kind's minds. I spent another hour struggling to form some type of antidote, almost to no avail. The only thing I managed to do was to develop an arresting agent. Nothing I tried seemed to reverse the damage that had settled in. I cursed as I took the arresting agent, at first feeling nothing, then felt the slippage slow, then stop. With at least that accomplished, I started to work harder on an antidote. I had hardly gotten started when I got a hostile alien alert. I saw on the view screen that more than twice what I faced before were advancing upon the ship. This wasn't good. I wasn't sure if I could defeat this many. I shook my head again. My mind was addled severely. This was starting to turn into a hopeless situation. Even as hard as I was fighting against the violent revenge emotion, I was starting to grow angrier. I grabbed a larger version of the fire cane. Heading out the hatch, I almost forgot my air filters. I had to shake my head again, feeling slightly stupid. I got as far from the ship as I could, watching as the new group of aliens advanced upon my position. I carefully moved further away. These new vehicles were definitely different. These seemed to be heavily armored, again a sign of intelligence that I completely ignored. I also didn't notice that they seemed to be trying to circle me. I managed to get the first four, though. This agitated them more. If I didn't know better, this seemed more military. I was afraid for the first time since all this had started. If indeed this was military, then there would be far more than even I could handle. I thought that now would be time to beat a hasty retreat. I had to shake my head as I thought I ought to destroy more on the way to the ship. Okay, I thought. This was getting ridiculous. I made my way back to the ship the long way around. No telling if the aliens could penetrate the hull. I was almost there when I heard a few of the armored vehicles coming up behind me. Damn it! I had hoped to slip away. I stopped ready to take out all the rest of them. I managed to send a remote signal to the ship to get the engines to cycle up for launch. I had told myself that I wasn't going to destroy any more of the aliens. Then my anger took over. I also noticed that the aliens were bringing out heavier armored vehicles. Damn it! This was truly military. I was obviously now considered a big threat. I destroyed one of the heavy vehicles at their rear, diverting them for the moment. I sprinted for the ship, then noticed that as soon as I moved, they turned back toward me. They were somehow able to track me. This wasn't good at all. I made the ship, seeing that the engines were almost ready for departure. I secured everything as soon as I was inside. I needed to lift as soon as I could. Another alarm was going off detecting a possible aerial assault. I had to wait a few more minutes as the engines weren't cycling as fast as usual. Finally, I got them started as I managed to get the ship off the ground, then the ship was rocked. A huge explosion against the hull had me checking for damage. Thankfully, there was none. I maneuvered the ship clear of the trees then started to climb. I had achieved enough height that the ground weapons were now ineffective. 
I breathed a sigh of relief, forgetting the approaching aerial assault. Less than a moment later, the ship was again rocked by several explosions. Again, thankfully, there was no damage, though the atmospheric shields were in place. Alarms were again going off as a targeting system came online. I nodded as I fired several shots from the energy weapon system. I was amazed when six explosions were detected not far away. Again, the ship was rocked, even as we started to climb faster. I fired again, destroying another six of the aliens' flying warships. I was starting to detect more moving to intercept me, though we were now climbing faster than the aliens. Finally, making the atmosphere, I set the nav to auto to get us home. I had already placed the captain and the first officer in stasis. I was heading there myself, watching as the blue world grew distant quickly. Yes, I had to make sure that Equine Command knew of the dangers of this world. I sighed as the stasis field activated around me. I also felt the ship switch to star drive. It was a week later that my stasis field was deactivated. I saw that we were on final approach to our home world. I was having a hard time setting up the ship for landing. This is Space Flight Control. Repeat, this is Space Flight Command. Your vector is too steep, adjust accordingly, the voice said. Space Flight Command, I am having trouble operating the ship. Most of the crew was lost. The captain and first officer were incapacitated with debilitating ailments. I am the last member of the crew that still has some mental capacity left. Please advise medical we have three emergency cases on board, I told them. I felt the ship's system taken over by flight command. Then a few minutes later I felt the ship land. As I saw the others come aboard, I was suddenly afraid that they were going to hurt me. Thankfully I had recorded everything before I started to slip into stupidity. I wasn't there when they commissioned a statue for me and the crew. Nor was I there when the Council declared the planet Earth off-limits for all time. I was in a learning center trying to regain what I could of my mind. The captain and the first officer weren't as lucky. They were barely back to a toddler mentality. I shook my head again, frustrated that I couldn't retain what I was trying to learn. I stomped my hooves. I had heard that they were working on a way to reverse the effects, based off what serum I had made though they were still having trouble understanding all of it. Huh. Guess I was far smarter than I thought I had been. 